Hi, I'm Mark from Sounds in Sync. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how Adio Load can be used to create a scene change track, that is, a Pro Tool session containing an audio track where the clips show where each scene starts and ends, and the scene is named with the scene number and description of the scene. But first, I'm going to compare this to another track that Adio Load can create, is the Picture Cut track. This track contains clips showing where each shot starts and ends, and the clip is named with the original source footage. This track can be used to manually generate a scene change track by selecting the clips that pertain to a particular scene and healing those clips. But what I'm going to show you today is how Eddie Load can create the scene change track automatically and also name the clip name with a scene description that has been extracted out of the PDF shooting script. So here is what you need to create a scene change track in Eddie Load a Vision EDL containing clip names that include the scene number of each shot somewhere in the clip name. Here you can see these shots are all for scene 14, and so we need to extract the number before this slash character, and that I'll show you how to do in Edit Load shortly. As well as the EDL, if we want to be able to add the scene descriptions, we need a PDF shooting script, and Edit Load can extract these scene descriptions out of the script or Eddie Load can import the scene descriptions from a text file like this, and I'll show you how to generate an example file as a template. So now let's create one of these scene change tracks. Just select Create Scene Change List from the list menu, and this new scene change track window, new in Eddie Load version 3.4, is displayed. So this window steps you through the process and tells you exactly what you need to do at each step of that process. So first we'll load up the Vision EDL for Real One. And one thing I'll note here is if your project is say a documentary where the source footage is coming from a variety of frame rates, Eddie Load here will want you to select a frame rate that allows you to load all of those events. Now to create the scene change track, these frame rates need to be the same. So to get around this problem, you can check ignore source time codes because we don't actually need to know the time codes of that source footage. But for this one, we're OK, so we'll just load it as is. So with the EDL loaded, we can now click Next, and we can load the scene descriptions if we have them. So here, we're just going to load this PDF shooting script. It's going to ask us the first page that the actual script starts on. If you have a problem loading in scripts, it can help to set this to the first page of the actual script data, ignoring the header. And here it load extracts all of the scene descriptions for the whole script. Now, if you don't have a script, but you want to create your own scene descriptions, what you can do is click this button here to export the text file. And that'll provide a, an example text file that you can use as a template. Next, we extract the scene numbers from these clip names. So I'm just going to scoot down to say, these clips here. And so what we need to do is configure these controls here so that we extract just the scene number from the events that actually contain a scene number. We're going to look for a clip that has two or three elements, and elements I mean by text between a slash character. So we're going to look for two or three elements and delimited by slash, and then we've gotten to extract the scene number from the first element. So if your scene number happened to be in the second element, there was a slight number in the first, you can obviously set it to extract the scene number from the correct element. And then when you click these different events, you can see down here in the preview, the number that's going to get extracted. So what we want to do is extract no number from the clip names that do not contain a scene number and a scene number that uh, is contained within a clip name here. These bottom uh, controls here will actually clean up or remove uh, characters that we don't want that aren't actually part of the scene number. So here we're going to check all these options so that we get just the scene number. Once we've done that, click Next, and Eddie Load copies the scene number to the role name now at this stage here, what we can do is clean up the list or remove events 
they don't actually have the correct scene number. Or we can do this cleanup once the session has been opened in Pro Tools and I'll show you how to clean up there. So rather than guess what events are working and which aren't, we're just going to move to the next step, which actually removes all the events that don't have a scene number and merges all the events that pertain to the same scene. So now we have an edit list showing where all the scenes start and end. And we also have a clip name that has been named with the scene descriptions from the PDF shooting script that we loaded. So all we have to do now is set up the specs for our Pro Tools session and click Next. And we'll save the session next to the source file that we loaded. Now, Edilo is just reminding us here that we can't actually import the track from this Pro Tools session directly. We need to open the session in Pro Tools first and click Save. So now we'll just open that up. Here we can see a scene change track created by Edilode. So now we can load up the pictures and we can extend these clips to uh, fill in any gaps that have been created by the list and we had some here say if we don't need them we can extend this uh, scene 3 clip all the way up to the next scene and delete this scene 7 as it looks like scene 7 doesn't exist because uh, it's not in the script and repair your track as such so another reason to generate the scene change track with these scene descriptions is that it can be used by our ADR queuing application EDIQ and in the reports that it generates, it can show the scene description before the ADR cues of that scene, and thereby making it easier to identify what cues this scene is for. So now I'm just going to jump back to Edilload and show you a quick way to generate the scene change tracks for the rest of these reels in this film. This scene change track window has jumped back to the first tab again and asking for the edit list to be loaded. So we'll just discard the changes here of this list and we'll load up the EDL for Reel 2. Now, because we have processed a scene change track for Reel 1, we can now click this button, Process List and Export Session, which processes the list in exactly the same as Reel 1 and simply asks you to name the Reel 2 scene change track session. We can save that, clear this list, and load up reel 3. Process that. And the last thing I'll show you now is if you want to actually save this list before you clear it, you can of course save it as an edit load list. But when you load that back into Ediload, it sees it as being a scene change list and automatically flips the scene change track window to the last tab so that you can export a Pro Tools session from it. So thanks for watching this demonstration video. If you haven't tried Ediload out for yourself, either on Mac OS or Windows, just head to the download page of our website. Once the app is installed, just run it and click try to activate a trial license.